Well, we may have discovered Europe's most unusual capital city. Skopje, North Macedonia. You've probably never heard of it. What is this place? Is this Europe's kitschiest and strangest capital? It's certainly very unusual. Skopje is the capital and largest city of a tiny country in the Balkans called North Macedonia. This part of Europe has changed hands many times. It's been ruled by many different empires, the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, and even part of Yugoslavia's socialist state. It's got architecture that, quite frankly, is all over the place. So every corner you turn, definitely expect to see something unexpected. Oh, this lady's cool. In 2014, the government gave Skopje a total neoclassical makeover, from very Caesar's palace looking Greek statues to their very own Arc de Triomphe. As tourists journeying through the Balkans, we felt like you only need a full day to really get a good feel of this place and the North Macedonian people and how they live and go about their everyday lives. Most of the attractions are within walking distance from each other. Macedonia Square, with a 72-foot monument of Alexander the Great. The Old Bazaar, which also happens to be the largest bazaar in the Balkans. The Memorial House of Mother Teresa. The Kale Fortress, the highest point of the city. To even the Bohemian Street next to Skopje City Park. It's all there within a few steps of each other. We've made it to Macedonia. And let me show you. Look at our little balcony here. We are staying in and you're currently looking at Skopje, AKA Scope Yeezy. <laughs> it looks like Scope J, but it's actually Scope Yay. We are making our way from Albania over now through Macedonia and then Bulgaria and Romania, all the Ias. Yeah, we're here for just like 36 hours, a very short trip. And we're gonna try to see as much as we can tomorrow. We're gonna go on a walking tour. We're gonna try some authentic Macedonian food, hopefully find some good coffee and definitely check out the old bazaar here. Going on a walking tour this morning. We got Alexander the Great right here. They're pride and joy. I will tell you at the end of the tour about the alcohol. Please try it. Do it the first. This is a meat first. We've made it to the bazaar. You feeling bizarre in the bazaar? There's some bizarre shit in the bazaar. And they, essentially, this whole block, this whole area yeah. is the bazaar. There's tons of shops, clothing, jewelry, jewelry a lot of like little cafes and whatnot. <laughs> Look at the color of that. There's rose iced tea lemonade, and they also make an elderflower one. But we see everyone sitting outside of here with these like, bright red cups. So we had to try it. It's actually really freaking good. Like, really, really good. We're trying to find the Everyone's street. lounging, though. Look at this. They're just sitting down at this little table. You see, you see a lot of like Turkish coffee and Turkish tea out here. So yeah. there's definitely that, oh, that Ottoman influence, you know? And now we're going to go see some bling bling. Yes, where's the jewelry? It's right here, it's right here. the color yeah. oh yeah and there's the mosque so we learned on our tour that they're basically gold obsessed out here in Macedonia yeah and they basically gift gold for like all, everything all the rites of passage and stages of life where it's like when you're born your baby takes your first steps <laughs> here's some gold oh you had your first successful poop here's some gold Nathan. <laughs> you graduated from first grade here's some gold I the whole point is that when they accumulate this gold throughout life it's like a level of security for a rainy day in the event that you really needed money you would turn in that gold to help you out you know what else is gold finding an online classroom to learn a foreign language that's convenient easy to schedule and not intimidating Bonjour, monsieur. Je vais tenter de tout commander en français. Alors, soyez patient avec moi, s'il vous plaît. If you're wondering why I'm learning French, it's because of this guy. Alors, je vais prendre une saucisse fumée avec du fromage fondu. Nathan's a native French speaker. I put extra butter on my croissant. 
He was actually born in Paris. Nathan's whole family speaks French and I don't wanna be the odd one out. One day we're gonna have kids and they will be multilingual and I wanna be a part of that. So it's time for me to get to work and get my French on. Uh -huh. I'm definitely somebody who needs a lot of accountability and structure when it comes to language learning. I took four years of French in high school and I forgot everything. Classic American. So I was stoked when I saw Lingoda's language sprint challenge, which is to take 30 lessons in 60 days. And if you're super hardcore, you can do the super sprint challenge, which is 60 lessons in 60 days. Mais moi, je commence avec juste 30 leçons. The classes are kept small to only three to five people. The teachers are friendly and supportive and it's gotten me up and running again on my journey to French fluency. And the wild thing about doing the sprint is, if you can successfully complete all of those lessons in 60 days, you get 50% cash back. The next sprint starts February 12th, and we have a discount code for you if you wanna start your 2024 off with a bang. And then, oh, up here is even another part of the bazaar, it looks like, yeah, maybe tiny markets. Yeah, let's go check this out. Hello. Hello. Hey, he was cute. Wow, this is a lot of people. Oh, so juicy. Oh, you got more peppers. Look, peppers, 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 peppers. Peppers everywhere. Everywhere. You'll be burping all day long, dude. <laughs> wow, look at the color of that ground up peppers. Mm. Smells so good. Yes. Yes. What's your channel name? <laughs> what, 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 what's your channel name? <laughs> On World Travel. Go. Can you write it, it down? Yes. I want to check it out. Okay. Someone sees me. I did not expect the call to prayer to be played here. Here. I think it's, I believe it's only 20 or 30 percent though. It's not like Albania's is 60 percent, but here it's a lot less. Yeah. yeah. These minarets right here were built often like near a hammam where people would gather near the market. So it's kind of like a place where like the community gets together. Ooh, a sample, okay. <laughs> this, 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 We're trying Macedonian food for the first time, and we were told to go to a place that has a lot of locals and is not empty. So we walked by and listened very carefully. This place is full of locals. We're the only tourists and we ordered five or six different dishes, ones that our tour guide recommended that we try. Let's do this, dude. Psyched. All right, so this is the quintessential Macedonian meal. These are beef skewers with, of course, a pepper. They use peppers in their cuisine like crazy. Here we have kebab. We've had something similar to this in Serbia and they call it chevapcici there. Here we have a shopska salad. This is cucumber really fresh tomatoes. Macedonia is known for their tomatoes here. Some onion, of course, peppers, and then this cheese, this freshly grated cheese on top, which I just tried a little spoonful, and it kind of reminds me of like Greek yogurt and cottage cheese combined. This comes in like this little clay pot, and it's baked beans. It's got paprika, onion, tomato. This is like a holy grail of their cuisine. This is called Ivar, and this is made with peppers that they cook, they peel, and then they mush together into this beautiful dip that then they spread on top of bread. Dude, the fat in that is unreal. Oh my god. That's super fresh. Nathan's dying on the other side. He's so hungry. Well, we may have discovered Europe's most unusual capital city. It has a kind of a quirky, not Disneylandy feel, but a little bit. Hey, what?
what happened? In 1963, they had this crazy earthquake that essentially leveled 80% of the city. So 80% of the city was destroyed and they had to rebuild it from scratch. So that also is why the city sort of feels, a lot of it feels newer. I've been really surprised with Scopeshe because it's very clean. It feels like a really modern city. Like it feels like a normal European city and they have the, the Ottoman influence with the bazaar and, and there's a lot of like, definitely like Turkish things. You find your baklava, you find your Turkish ice cream man. There's a hammam. It's just a good blend of like people from all over and different religions. You know, the Orthodox is the main religion here. Food wise, that was also interesting because it's almost a mix of like Greece meets the other Yugoslavian country foods. Like we had these little, those little skewers, those little sausages that you have like chivapcici, like in Serbia that we had, they have that here as well. So it's kind of an interesting blend that way. Wow. This place is fancy. Oh my gosh, yeah. Nice kitchen. High top table. Oh, eat there, watch some TV here. Got a little balcony with a view of Skopje. Ooh, this one ain't bad. We'll see how she feels. Damn, you're looking real fresh. Oh, 